back for the 2024 Real Cup. Yeah, Real Cup. And uh, here at Niverville Recreation Center in Niverville, Manitoba. Those of you who aren't from around here, it's about, I don't know, 30 minutes outside of Winnipeg. Ish. Down, down a dirt trail, and <laughs> we are underway watching Zeal play back to back games on court against Heathens. So Zeal just pulled out a 3 1 win against That was course. kind of a big deal. It was Zeal. a big deal for oh. Zeal, yeah, and that was quite, a, quite an excellent game. Um, really fun to watch. And uh, as we know, these are two two of the teams that are definitely in it today to, to win it. Like these, both of these teams, I would say, walked up this morning thinking that they have a very good chance at representing Manitoba at Nationals. And so uh, this should be a pretty pretty good game. Great ups, but good work by the line ref to notice that Dubuque came up and back down on the line. <laughs> and the line ref, uh, really impressive going above and beyond so to like uh, tag. actually tap people on the head <laughs> with her, her. Oh, and she's back at it. Not on my watch. For says. playoffs, it's electrified, right? Yes, exactly. And then you really just buzz out. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Jamie. Uh, JLC is what we refer to her. One of my teammates, actually. Four on four with that quick tapper. Holzer, always with a great arm. Generously passing the ball over to Amador on the right wing. We should see some really impressive defense from both of these teams. These teams are both incredibly agile. Very, very hard to hit. And uh, slightly smaller, you know, just shorter, um, more spry than uh, some of the other teams that we've seen out there that rely a, lot, a little bit more on their big offense, mm. um, which is not to undervalue the offense of either of these teams at all. They, uh, I think what we'll just see is a lot more jumping. 4v3. Oh, wait, I just saw it. <laughs> I swear the, uh, the, the, the ball retriever there and tricked me. There we go, 4v2. He's, he's half wearing that, that beignet. He's kind of like a, wearing it. Like wearing a, like a scarf. Uh, yeah, yeah, his scarf, his cape. To be fair, Great. they start to smell pretty questionable yeah. after a while, and putting them on your whole body is maybe not the best. Burden to throw will be on Zio. Holes are with the play call in the center. That's his winger to line up on the opposing winger. Como, a, a relatively new player in the Winnipeg uh, Manitoba dodgeball scene, but uh, really, really making a mark for himself. That was really a great throw. little throw, yeah. Oh, and look at the smile on Lynn's <laughs> face there. Amador taken out. He's feeling pretty proud of himself, and he sure should. Gonzalez getting the ball, three men hustling to the line. Ball's crisscrossing, but missing. Reset and the play call. Still zeal. Those those ups, but it's a good trailer. They get one nothing game. Yeah, you know those trail shots can be so effective. It's uh, especially if you've got a player like Lens who's going to make the jump. Then you're done, right? You jump and you're not jumping twice. Right? Yeah, very few players can, <laughs> can do the twist when they're midair. Yeah, move their body in midair. Yeah, there are a couple, and actually we might be looking at one right now. Uh, on ZL Dubuque might be one of those players. And, but uh, it certainly is, oh, I thought I heard a whistle going, but no, it was a squeaky shoe. It certainly is a, a, a trick that not a lot of players can do, which makes the trail shot very effective. Woo, into the gloves. That was a basket catch. Crips, AKA Grips. <laughs> he's, he's, he's earning his, his new last name. Uh, Rex Gonzalez also pointed out on that opening rush, just a great line hit. Zeal, very quick on their opening rush. Wow, that, that was a well well played from Heathens. I'm not sure. I actually don't know if they if that's a play that they did on purpose, the one two three, um, or if it was just something that happened based on their pre counters. But it was well done. A little heat seeker takes out the shoe of Charte and pushes him off court. Oh, there's two Como jerseys, but that's Dubuque in the middle wearing number nine. Yep, yeah, Dubuque in the middle, a real Como, Como on the end. Yeah. Be no Como. <laughs> Ball is up and uncatchable. That'd be a real Wilmot special to pull it in. Huh. Yeah, Wilmot, Dubuque, and Como. All six of the Heathens players. And they're burden to throw now. Crossing, no connecting. Good jumping jacks by Como. 
trips eliminated. I need a nap just watching these guys play. That's a lot of energy that they're expending, but they're doing a good job getting out of the way. These are certainly not small or understated moves that are being made. <laughs> Como right back to the line. Piche getting a ball from the teammate, but I'm able to hold on to it. Seller looking, looking straight ahead and saying, not today. Hard right, throw wide of its target. Shot clock resetting, two balls in hand by Dubuque. He's also ambidextrous, if I recall. Oh, that, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Dubuque, one of those players that just, I'm always just so impressed watching him. He, uh, he really moves around and Incredibly on court, and uh, yeah, shots are always right on target. Um, Wilmot as well, uh, just really impressive, both defensive and offensive player. You can see his offensive chops right there. Yeah. Yeah, and those are quick up <laughs> and to defend. Yeah, defensive chops. Oh, nasty movement on that throw. We uh, had to kind of exercise afterwards, made it look like it wasn't necessarily <laughs> yeah. intent. It's the universal sign for, hmm, that throw didn't yeah. do what I wanted it to do. Yeah. No, no, my own. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, yep. the left winger has the play call. Two on target, Wilmot doing an amazing job of getting it all. You know, heathens are, are doing exactly what I would do in their position. They are, they're not getting in their head, they're not getting sucked in, they're, being Woo! smart. Wow, Hickaway. Ankle biter. Taking out Dubuque and Heathens doing exactly what we'd all want to do with the lead. Three players to one. The sweeper misses wide of its target. Hickaway really, he brought his ball really in tight for that uh, that block and it gave me a, uh, made me a little bit anxious. Um, Having your ball that close to your body doesn't give you a lot of space for error if you're uh, if you're missing your block. Burden still on Heathens. Ooh, man, the <laughs> oh. drop on it. Yeah, that, that had a nice drop on that ball from Hickaway, and uh, but Como got under it. Oh, any, any longer hair in, in that time. Yeah, he had just a little bit of curl going on there. Um, or if he even stood up half a second earlier. Wow. One, two. Very uh, impressive play there. Como charges to the line, gets one, gets two. No, it is. Uh, yes, it's. Oh, up. yeah, that yep. looked like a hit to me. And there's just one left now for Patrick. Definitely a strong player here. Uh, Patrick is somebody not to be messed with. Kasprick, sorry, Kasprick. Raiden Kasprick. Uh, another shot right on the shoulder. Wow, one, two, three. Going yeah. back from a 3v1. That's really impressive. That is. Como has, uh, has really established himself as a very uh, solid player in the last year or so. Um, come out and uh, has really, yeah, really shown everybody how, how it's done. I don't recall so far the queuing being on, so there might be a line change. Mm -hmm. Another lefty. Yep. Oh, I think fake, fake toss back? I've, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't think I have either. Maybe, maybe Rex Gonzalez in the middle there wasn't quite ready for it. Yeah, maybe he just made a call an audible. I don't know, but interesting. What would, just for the sake of argument, what would the value of a fake toss back be? Well, because I was thinking, like, if you're not ready for it and the ball hits you and you bobble it, yeah. that's disaster. Yes. Because there's a, the other team is about to hit so not like a two, fake, if not, not five people. Not a fake, people. maybe, rather than just like a last-minute decision that the, the play wasn't ready. You'd be like, oh, you're not ready, yeah. and reset, throw it again. I guess you could do a fake toss back if you were mid-run and you brought your ball across the, the activation line, then maybe you could turn and throw it. Might be... Yeah, if, any, so it's, if anything, you're faking not to the player, yeah. and you're like, well, actually, I'm going to you know, cross-court it or something else. Oh, yeah. did you see that Woo! air on Wilma? <laughs> got way up there. His feet were, like, climbing in the Brought his invisible air. ladder. Yeah, climbed his invisible ladder and did not step out, which is amazing. <laughs> Burden to throw, heathens, squaring up. Charte getting well out of the way. 
know, we saw this on the last game as well. It's a low scoring game. Um, oh, that yes. was a hit for Chartier. Oh, maybe not. I thought that was a hit on Chartier. We are at the end of the first half. Players are going to head to the back line, making sure that three balls per side. No blocking. This is moments like this, seeing Dubuque's ambidextrous. It's just how uh, twisted he can get his yes. body happily. Yeah, and how like, effective he can be. Oh, like what a, what a, what a throw. Yeah, good that was a left-handed throw. All right, Heathens now want to make something happen. Shots exchanging, a late, late throw, crosses. Yeah, both of those throws were, were well-timed. Um, the one from Zeller and from Cripps, but just not quite where they needed to be. Solo throws back and forth, holes are eliminated, meanwhile. Rips stays alive, McEwen getting a ball late. So what do we have now? We're within 3v3. Um, so let's keep coming back to this, uh, this same organization here, the same three. And some kind of conversation going on. I, I think it might have been confirming that Crips in the corner was not out. It's the, uh, when you kind of wave your hands close to your body. <laughs> Oh, Dubuque. <laughs> Dubuque looking, and that was actually, oh my goodness, a great look. So much jumps. Yeah. Wow. You know, McEwen seeing those two balls coming at him and uh, just taking that offensive huh. move. Um, but wow, connecting with, was it both of those balls R in the air? rips and defends himself <laughs> by basically creating a shield. Yeah. And a line He's out. Like, you going to throw that ball at me? I'm going to throw my balls at your balls. And there's that trailer doing its job. Yeah, there it is. And uh, two, is that what, 2-0 two, two now for, uh, no, 3-0 three. Three now for Zeal um, as they head into the second half of this game. Now, from my estimation, Heathens did best in, uh, in these games when they were a little quicker off the draw with uh, pre-counters. And so, which is the opposite of what I was thinking in the last game where I saw them not doing really well, which was to dial it back, take a breather, um, not throw those balls away. I think, I think in this game, uh, if I'm the coach, I'd be saying the opposite. I'm saying, let's take those pre-counters, uh, let's keep them at the back line, let's not give them the confidence uh, to come that close up, and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. We're underway again, very de defensive opening rush, Belange is back. bait you know <laughs> and then he gets his blocks in there and gets out of the way and um it works well yeah you're, you're conceding no offense but you're hoping that a three ball defense uh will be quick to scoop it up and get yeah. out of the way yeah absolutely coons with the with the moves there he's running up making his play and running back very um very indicative of his cloth style of play Burn the throw, still on the near court, Heathens. Crips in the middle with Coombs, Coombs with the throw. Off target. Lots of Zeal players, quick to get up and play call with one another. Yeah, and they're making their play call high. And that's kind of what I'm thinking here from the Zeal team is, Zeal is not scared. And uh, and Heathens are, are not pushing them back off that line as much as they should be. Um, they shouldn't be comfortable having a conversation about their play that close up to the line with those guys with balls in hand across from them. Good rip, better dodging. And that, that was the example of that up and turn. Up and turn, yeah. <laughs> he had a little dodging. booster jet to move him a little yeah. bit. Okay. And Co taking out Coombs. Rips retrieving, hike away with two in hand, wants his winger to have it. Kasperick releases both, uh, just clipped. I thought he had that, and I was about to go on another Real Wilmot like, tour of impressiveness. Good shot. Oh, Great Crips. grips. Crips with his grips. Lanja, first out, is back in. And 
Antonio Blanche also has got some pretty good grips himself. So uh, let's see what he can do here. Whips it wide of its target. Burden to throw, reset. And Kasprick and Warwick. I will say that I've seen uh, I've seen Brogan Warwick walking around, and he's just got such a big smile on his face. This guy is absolutely crushing it and um, doing a great job this tournament and seems really happy to be here. And we're happy to have him. Well, he was taken out. Now 2v2. Whoa! Oh, what? How did he keep his feet from smashing that ball? I, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Can he fly? Oh, and, and it <laughs> looked like he was about to kick it. That's pretty impressive. And good move from Belancha. Chacha whips the ball. Two balls pretty good. Choose an individual target and neither connects. Meanwhile, shoe shot here, Como. Now one, two, one v two. And there's only one ball across from him, so let's see if he chooses to neutralize or if he chooses to, oh, yeah, neutralize. And Chartier still manages to keep Good all body of his limbs inside. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, right on target. Sometimes I'm just walking and I fall over, you know? Like, I, it's, uh, it's really, really impressive how he can move his body like that and like, keep all of his bits inside, hands and arms inside. <laughs> Burden is on Belangia for Heathens. Marco looking good here. Belangia looking good on these plays. He's staying alive, getting out of the way. All the things you want to do. Oh. There's and the he catch I was it telling in. you about. Wow. Turns it around. Not surprised to see it. Uh, he's well known for his clutch catches. And Piche on the board. The one, two throw, but a two ball block. He's got three in hand. Rips one high. Hits Blanche. Now 1v1. Both of these players incredibly agile. Um, I feel like this could potentially go on for <laughs> a while. That was a, so this is the battle of the younger siblings uh, <laughs> yeah. of the dodgeballers, eh? That's right. Yeah, Carly Pichet on uh, Rally. You'll see her play tomorrow. That's Brett Pichet's younger sister. And uh, I think actually Chartier is a cousin. Cousin. A cousin okay. of okay. Colin Chartier. Maybe not a brother. Well, hopefully he's a catching cousin. You know. Colin. Uh, this, yeah. Yes, well, they both are. That's quite the dynasty in that family then. And yep. Colin, uh, well sorry, Col yeah, Colin, uh, of course we know um, the Chartiers know exactly what they're doing and oh my goodness. Went to Paul, Paul protects and he Paul knows has, yes. just through the defenses. Wow, well, I uh, somebody give Paul a hug or a glass of water or something because he really, he really did an amazing job in that round. So the match is in hand. There's only a minute and 40 odd seconds left. You know, it's not impossible. If they, if, if Heathens pulls together a real quick win, um, this game is it's still up for well, grabs, but it would have to be super I would fast. say it would depend on a very offensive opening rush. That was, yeah, that, you know what? Really good block there from uh, uh, Warwick. Or, uh, Warwick Wayne. Yes, he, uh, he got up there, all three balls, they set him up as their sacrifice and, uh, <laughs> but he got back and he blocked cleanly and uh, all three balls in hand four balls now because there was an offensive play by Zeal oh my doing great offense yeah Zeller is not messing around with that ball well not making sure that it's uh it's not up for grabs oh, fakes for days Zeal heading to the back line they're technically possible they could end it in just a few seconds here. But as the shot clock resets, now it's Zeal's burden to throw. And likely only one ball heading out. Oh, Hickaway was a big throw, but a, a little high. You can see there he uh, he was on the back foot a little bit, didn't want to come up, which means that Zeal's defense is working. Um, he was uh, not able to plant his front foot with get quite the stability he needed to, to bring that throw down. And we're just approaching the final 10 seconds of the match. Z 
Brazil to the line. One, two, punch is good, and they get one ball back in the process. Belanger gets the ball. Belanger, Zeller. And we go into our no blocking round with Coombs and Warwick, I believe. Going up against five zero men. They're going to play call. It's their burden to start it. Warwick's ready to be on offense himself until he realizes. Two shots there for Coombs. Amador with the connection. And a 1v5. Four balls in hand for Warwick. Up oh, and he out. takes it. Oh, and Wilmot brings it in. Good there little shot go. there, though. The uh, first one, it's when you can place it so that someone has to reach, um, you're in a good position. So, you know, well played by Heathens. And uh, again, well played by Zeal. Really doing a great job uh, in this tournament, showing us that they are not messing around. Stars of the court for two matches, but we're moving on. Next, we're going to be watching Apex and Golden Age. Oh, that'll be a great game. Looking forward to that. <laughs> 